What is up, Army fans? Joe Icona with GoBlackKnights.com coming to you live right after the UTSA Army game final score. Army 37, UTSA 29. Cannot overstate the importance of this win for the Army football team. We'll get into that a little bit later on as we wrap things up and get into the conclusion later tonight. But what a game for the Black Knights. They go on the road, hostile environment at UTSA, really good program in the American Athletic Conference, one of the top two or three teams in that conference. Go on the road, walk away with a 37 to 29 win. The offense looked amazing. Defense did just enough to hang in there and win. Yes. The UTSA Roadrunners were without their star quarterback, Frank Harris, understood, but they still have amazing speed at receiver. They still have athletes all over the field. Definitely one of the biggest road wins in Jeff Munkin's career at Army. You could see his emotion after the game and how excited he was to walk away with the win. Um, let's get into it. Let's get into some of the specifics, talk about some of my takeaways from the game and what Army can look forward to going forward. I think this bodes really well for the team the rest of the year, especially as they get into the meet it or schedule. They have four to five really tough opponents coming up, and they took care of number one on the road tonight at UTSA. And I think this sets them really sets them up really well for the remainder of the season. Um, let's talk about it. You know, the game started off opening drive, you know, the new offense looked like the old offense. It didn't really, the play selection was different. The formations were different, right? But the result was still the same. A seven minute and 25 second drive, 16 plays, 75 yards, uh, no pass completions, got all 75 yards on the ground, capped off by the uh, massive Hayden Reed TD, um, which we'll talk about his performance a little later on. There were some stellar performances across the board on offense. And the offense really came into their own. Then defense took over. Um, you know, you saw UTSA and what they could do and some of their speed and talent as they broke some tackles. Jimmy Charlo came up with a huge strip on the next series. Q Hammonds came up with the fumble recovery, which was really big um, on the, uh, the Army second drive. David Crossan, the uh, backup tight end who's filling in for Josh Lingenfelter. What a great job he's doing blocking and open up holes for Daly and the running backs. Really did a great job. Multiple fourth down conversions on that drive and just good old school Fourth and Kobe, Jacoby Buchanan, just blowing through the offensive line and blowing through the defense for that big touchdown where it looked like he was going to be stopped at the line of scrimmage. And he just took off and went for a touchdown. That was old school Army football in the new formation in Drew Thatcher's offense. Um, UTSA second drive, there was some poor tackling, um, led to, uh, you know, UTSA was able to score. Quinn Moretzky came in. He did a great job, had a clutch game going three for three on field goals in some pressure situations. Uh, Quinn continues to be extremely accurate inside 50 yards. The 45 yarder, I believe maybe his career long. So that was great. That was really good. Um, you know, then you go towards halftime and of course the big play that really swung momentum in UTSA's favor going into the locker room. Army is up 20 to seven, getting ready to go into the locker room with a big two score lead. And unfortunately, UTSA completes the Hail Mary pass uh, at the goal line that goes in for a touchdown to their big receiver Cephas, I believe, who uh, had a really good game and, um, you know, really wasn't played well by the Army D-backs. They really need to bat that on down instead of trying to intercept it. Um, a couple of us thought, you know, maybe put uh, a big receiver like Isaiah Alston in there. And with his ball skills and 6'4 height, he's able to knock some of that down and, and maybe make a play there. So the second half, the Roadrunners have all the momentum at that point. Um, you know, UTSA comes out, gets the ball. Leo Lowen gets juked uh, by their running back. Um, but then we came up with some nice third and fourth down stops. Um, Jimmy Charlo had really nice coverage on the tight end on fourth down. Charlo played a heck of a game on defense. I'll tell you what, his improvement from last year to this year has been exponential. Jimmy Charlo should be really proud of his play and what he's been doing. Uh, you could see why he was elected one of the co-captains of the team. Um you know, Army uh, drove down, was held to a field goal once again, uh, ran a really nice option play to Hayden Reed. I really like Bryson's Bryson Daly's pitch on that to Reed. Reed showed great speed to the perimeter again. I'll tell you what, Hayden Reed is going to be a baller for Army. That kid had a big time game. 
Um, UTSA comes back, runs the screenplay to Cephas. He jukes everybody, goes for six. Uh, at that point in the game, we're trading field goals for touchdowns. I thought Army's first down productivity slowed down a little bit, and that hurt some of their drives in that uh, span there. And then maybe the play that changed the game, the onside kick. Really good call, I thought, by Jeff Trailer, the UTSA coach, to go for an onside kick there, down 23 to uh, 21, I believe it was, uh, with the opportunity to take the lead right there. And uh, they almost executed it, but they uh, blocked before the ball had gone 10 yards, which is illegal, which gave Army the ball in great field position. And then Drew Thatcher dials up for maybe the first time in Army history a double pass. Uh, they throw it out to Markel Johnson. It almost ends up as a pick six for UTSA. Johnson catches it, chucks it downfield to Isaiah Alston. Yeah, he didn't hit him in stride, but let's face it, folks, he's a running back. He's not a quarterback, and he threw a heck of a pass. Alston gets a big play, and then they come right back. Bryson Daly throws a dime to a wide open Noah Short in the end zone for a touchdown. That play broke UTSA's back. And that was really when the momentum switched back to Army. Army goes up 30 to 21. Um Nate Smith had himself a game on defense, too. He was doing a really nice job after UTSA averaged over six yards of carry running the ball. Nate came down late in the game and did a really good job bottling up their running game. So uh, hats off to Nate Smith. Um, then Army gets the ball back. Key drive, drive of the game. They're up uh, 30 to 21 at the time. Um and fourth and goal from the three. And I'm sitting here watching a game with a bunch of guys who I'm on a golf trip with, actually. And uh, we're going, gosh, they, they need to kick this. But uh, Monk knew what he was doing once again. So did Drew Thatcher. Uh, QB follow. Bryson Daly powers his way into the end zone on uh, fourth and goal from the three. And, you know, it, it's decisions like that that a lot of us thought were missing in the Louisiana Monroe game. You know, Jeff Munkin cut his teeth on being gutsy and showing a lot of intestinal fortitude. And that's what really has made him one of the greatest coaches in Army history, second winningest coach of all time. And he went back to a lot of that tonight, um, went for a lot of fourth downs, got them all, didn't get stuffed one time. Fourth and goal from the three, Bryson Daly goes in for the touchdown to put Army up two scores, which was huge. Um, you know, then they do something they really can't do. Uh, UTSA exploited a mismatch on defense. Um, Casey Larkins one-on-one -on -one with a receiver with no safety help. They go 72 yards for a quick touchdown. Um, and then Army gets the ball back, and they're able to run the clock out. Uh, Bryson Daly, again, with some big plays, making first downs, diving ahead, finding holes. Um, really excited about Bryson Daly's play. So let's talk about some of the highlights now. You know, um, First off, I said this after the ULM game. It was an atrocious offensive performance. I also said, let's not throw the baby out with the bathwater. You remember that? Yeah, well, Drew Thatcher's offense seems to be kicking. 58 points last week, 37 this week. So for all the Drew Thatcher haters out there, sorry, this offense isn't going anywhere, and Army's going to keep putting up video game numbers, so get used to it. Number two, Bryson Daly. A lot of Bryson Daly haters out there early in the season. The kid is starting to grow on me. Third start, I'll tell you what, he had a phenomenal game for Army. I really like what he does in the running game. He reads his blocks exceptionally well, finds holes, and can break tackles. Guys, it's been a while. You'd have to go back to Kelvin Hopkins and Ahmad Bradshaw since Army's had a quarterback who can break tackles at the line of scrimmage. Bryson Daly's big. He's six foot 215. He's got some size. He's got some power. He's got some speed. And he brings a lot to this Drew Thatcher offense. He is also gaining confidence every single week. We're seeing him improve in the confidence area. He's throwing some really nice passes, doing some great things, conducting this Drew Thatcher offense. And I really am excited to see what Bryson Daly can bring to the table over the next 28, 29 games or so of his career that he's got left as an Army quarterback um, just gets better and better. And, and, and for those of you who say size doesn't matter at quarterback, you're wrong. And as you saw tonight, he can take a pounding and keep ticking. You can't do that when you're 5'6", 180 pounds. I'm sorry, it's physics. Um, Bryson had a big game, 7 for 17 passing for 133 yards. 7.8 average, one touchdown through the air on the ground, um, 24 carries, 100 yards, 
4.2 average um, along the 13 yards. Just as impressive on the ground, we were watching this here, uh, is the way he pushes Buchanan and Reed on, and those guys in short yardage. Um, and Hayden Reed, man, what a great game he had. Sophomore, I'm really looking forward to see what he can do the next couple of years. 20 carries, 107 yards, 5.4 YPC average, one touchdown along at 27 yards. Really liked what he did on, let's call it the new option look, where he took the pitch, got to the perimeter, and really made some stuff happen. I'm really excited about the Bryson Daly and Hayden Reed combination there in the backfield and what they're able to bring the, to the table, along with, of course, Jacoby Buchanan continuing to pound it up the middle. And if you're going to talk about the Army run game um, and you're going to talk about what we can do in the pass game, you got to take your hats off to the offensive line. They controlled and dominated the line of scrimmage against a bigger, tougher, maybe faster defensive line the whole night. And that offensive line really deserves kudos and probably MVP. Uh, you know, defensively, again, I, I look at Nate Smith had a phenomenal game. Jimmy Charlo had a great game. And uh, I think the corners did a really good job against some really tall, really fast receivers. Um, you know, the safeties made a couple of mistakes, but they played well. And overall across the board, I, I think, you know, if we're giving out helmet stickers, um, you got to give one to Quinn Moretzky for going three for three on field goals. Bryson Daly, of course, for conducting and leading that offense and doing such a great job. Hayden Reed for being the team's leading rusher. Noah Short, how about the sophomore receiver convert, converted defensive back coming up with a big touchdown catch? Another circus catch down the middle of the field. Love Noah Short and what that kid can bring to the offense. And uh, last but not least, the offensive line, just a great game overall. Oh, and, and I forgot my Buford High School guy, uh, hometown guy there, Jackson Powell, making a huge sack late in the game, uh, forcing UTSA to punt on uh, their last drive. So um, great job across the board. You know, as we look forward for Army, what does that mean? Well, ULM was a game they clearly shouldn't have lost, and it set them behind schedule for the year. Um with this win tonight over UTSA, they came in as eight and a half point underdogs. Uh, they are back on schedule for bowl eligibility. Um, I think they have a really good shot now to go seven and five or maybe even eight and four if they stay healthy and continue to improve every week like we've seen. Um, I really think Drew Thatcher's offense is starting to click. I think he's extremely creative in his play calling. I think the run game looks good. I think the passing game looks great. Maybe the best I've seen it at West Point. Um, and he's catching defenses off guard, which is awesome. And he's playing the army strength. So as you do that, the defense is going to continue to do what they do under defensive coordinator, Nate Woody. Uh, they've done an excellent job, shut out Delaware state last week. So you look at army schedule now as it progresses, you know, at Syracuse, that's clearly a tough one, right? You know, anything's possible. They could definitely get a win there, but let's say they go up to Syracuse and they don't pull that one out. Um, then you have Boston College and Troy at home. Do not be intimidated by the Boston College names, folks. They uh, they beat Holy Cross by one touchdown, um, or, or three points, I should say. And I know Holy Cross is top five FCS, whatever. Okay. Um, Boston College, not that impressive. I think at Mikey Stadium, big homecoming weekend, a lot of reunion classes there. My reunion class will be there. I think Army could take that one. They can certainly beat Troy. I mean, they had Troy dead to rights last year, just didn't finish a couple of drives. Uh, so I think those are two very winnable games. And then, of course, they go on the road to SEC powerhouse LSU. Um, you know, probably probably an L. Uh, and then they come home. They've got UMass. That should be a win. Um, Air Force, we know, can go either way. Holy Cross at home, I think they should win. And then uh, Coastal at home. You know, when you look at that schedule and then going into the, the Army-Navy game, always a toss-up, right? Uh, Army definitely has the potential to win seven games, which would set them up for a bowl. Um, when you look at that, with a first-year quarterback, first-year offensive coordinator, uh, having to retool the entire offense, seven and five in a bowl game this year, 
would probably be as ma- as a, many amazing things as Jeff Munkin's done at Army. This would probably be his best coaching job in his 10 years there. So really excited, as you can tell, uh, pretty much the opposite of, of how I felt after the Universal Louisiana Monroe game. Hope to have some guests here for you on our post-game analysis on GoBlackKnights.com coming up. Um, it's tough coordinating calendars, but we're trying to make that happen with some former players, uh, some some other great analysts that we'll get for you. Uh, but let me know what you think. Let me know if, you know, a lot happened tonight. So I probably left some key stuff out. Let me know in the, in the comments section what you thought I left out, uh, what we could have highlighted differently. Let me know if you disagree with me in any areas uh, or let me know if you agree with me. But really excited about where the rest of the season is heading for Army. And uh, I, I just really think tonight – um, put them ahead of schedule when it comes to the bowl chase and made up for uh, really what happened in the Louisiana Monroe loss. Oh, and I guess I do want to highlight before I sign off, no turnovers tonight. Army doesn't turn the ball over. They can compete with anybody in the country. And I absolutely mean that. So thanks a lot. Have a great night. This has been Joe Icono for goblacknights.com signing off. <laughs>